Hi, and welcome to Comsky Corner. Today we're going to be talking about primary and secondary storage. This video is specifically for the new OCR GCSE Computer Science course. However, it's applicable for most exam boards. So first, let's have a look at primary storage. There are three main types of primary storage that you need to be aware about. Firstly, RAM, or random access memory. Next, ROM, or read-only memory. Lastly, virtual memory. A computer needs primary storage as it stores the data and programs that are currently in use. So let's compare RAM and ROM. RAM is random access memory and is the main memory of a computer that stores data, applications, and the operating system when in use. When the power is turned off, it loses all its data, meaning it is volatile. Increasing the amount of RAM on the computer means that more data and programs can be kept available. It also means that programs will run faster. On the other hand, we have ROM, which is read-only memory. This is a form of memory that can retain its contents even when the computer is switched off, meaning it's non-volatile. Also, as the name suggests, ROM is read-only, meaning it's uneditable. This is ideal for ROM's purpose, which is to store the instructions needed to get the computer system up and running, so it's used for the boot system. This is because it cannot be overwritten by the computer. Flash memory is a type of ROM chip, and it's a good thing to be familiar with. It's solid state memory that can be used in portable or removable devices to store data. Examples of where it's used is in SD cards for phones, as well as USB sticks and the common characteristics are that it's non-volatile and has limited write cycles. The last type of primary storage that you need to know about is virtual memory. Virtual memory is the part of the hard disk that is used to supplement the main memory, so that when a computer doesn't have enough space in RAM, virtual memory acts as a temporary storage. It does this by moving data and instructions from the hard disk to main memory when no longer needed, but this can make a computer slow to respond. Now let's take a look at secondary storage. Yet again, there are three types of secondary storage that you need to know about. Optical, magnetic, and solid state. A computer needs secondary storage as it's the non-volatile, long-term storage used to keep data and programs indefinitely. Within optical storage, there are three different types of disks that you are probably already familiar with. The first is the CD, which in the past you may have used to store music. This is because it's relatively cheap and has a low capacity, so it's used to backup data, transfer data, like music, and distribute programs. Next, we have the DVD, which often stores movies. This is because, again, it is relatively cheap, but has a relatively high capacity, so it's used to backup data, transfer data, as well as distribute games and high-definition films. Lastly, there's Blu-ray. Like the other optical discs, this is relatively cheap, but has the largest capacity, so it's used to distribute games and high-definition films. The next type of storage that we're going to have a look at is magnetic storage, or HDD. The magnetic hard disk drive can be an internal drive on a computer or an external portable drive. This type of storage uses a stack of magnetized rigid plates, as shown here, that rotate and has a read or write head like this one that hovers just above the surface and can move inwards and outwards over the platters to read data. This setup means that magnetic storage has a relatively slow access, but also has a large capacity for a relatively low cost. The last type of secondary storage that you will need to know about are solid state drives. And these come in many different forms, including USB sticks and SD cards. Solid state drives are more costly than magnetic drives, and this is because they have no moving parts. However, this also means that there are many different advantages. Some of these are shown here, and include the fact that solid state drives have faster read and write operations, as well as use less power and do not generate heat or noise. They are also suitable for portable devices because they are lightweight and are not susceptible to damage through sudden movements. There are six main factors you need to be aware of when considering choice of secondary storage, and you need to be able to recall and apply these when justifying which type of secondary storage is best in a certain situation. These factors are capacity, speed, portability, durability, reliability, and cost. 
And an easy way to remember these is to remember the phrase, crazy spiders play dodgeball really cheerfully. In this video, we have looked at the three main types of primary storage, of RAM, ROM, and virtual memory, as well as looking at the three types of secondary storage, optical, magnetic, and solid state. We have also looked at the six factors to be aware of when considering choice of secondary storage. So if you enjoyed this video, then please make sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. See you next time. Bye!